welcome to Love Anything Art. Today I'll show you how I made this necklace using a cane I made in my previous video. To start with, I will roll out a thin piece of this beige colored clay. And then these are the canes I used and made in my last video. I'll leave a link for that in the description box below. I'll just cut off even sized pieces. And it was pretty easy to slice through these because I have had the cane sitting out for a few days. And then just start placing those side by side all the way across your colored clay. This one I'm using beige. And then you can just cut off any of that excess clay. And I'll place that on a piece of paper so that it does not stick to my work surface and distort my piece. And then I'll just start gently rubbing the clay in between the two pieces of paper to try and smooth out any of those gaps and seams in the clay. You can also use a roller. And once I have done that, I will just start cutting out my shapes. I'm using a large, medium, and small sized circle cutter. Kind of looks like a snowman. And then I'm going to place on a Ziploc baggie that's been cut in half. And then make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And this way, when I cut down, it will give me a nice, smooth edge. And then give it a firm press to cut the clay all the way through. And then I've placed that on a piece of paper and I will put my baggie on top again and I will cut out a smaller circle in the middle. And you can place your bigger circle back on there to make sure you have it in the center. And once you feel like you have it where it needs to be, then just go ahead and press down. And remove that baggie, and now you have your circle within a circle. And then on that smaller circle, place the baggie back on, and then use the smaller or smallest of the circles or the center. And on this one, I'm not going to use the baggie because it is so thin, the clay on the outside, that it will mess up and not come out quite right. I tried it on a piece already and it did not look good, so the center just won't be as smooth as the outside, but I still think it looks pretty good. And then you can just place your finished pieces on a sheet of paper so it'll be ready for baking. And I will make a couple of those. I got my three made. And then those are the three from the center of the three. And now I want an even smaller circle to fit inside of 
those circles. Boop, so it'll be like that right there in the middle. So I'll just need to cut out a couple of those. And you can dip your cutter in water so that it does not stick in the inside of the clay. And it will pop out really easily, because if not, it will distort, get stuck inside of there, and you'll have to try and cut out some more. Oh, it popped right out. And I'll make a few more of those. And now that I have my pieces cut out, I'll just need to skewer each of my pieces. And this is like a little weird thing I made by twisting the clay up and then rolling it into a ball. I'm going to use those for the earrings. I've done most of them and I just saved one so I can show you. And take your largest ring and try to make it as close to the center as possible. Give it a nice measure and then skewer one end. And then go all the way across to the other side. And then make sure you have your center piece also in the very center. And skewer that all the way through the middle. Use your fingers as a guide to push it down straight through the center. And then to make sure that my piece is big enough, I've put my bead on there that I'm going to use when I am done. It's a little like Savorsky crystal. And then I will put a bead also on the other side. And then gently press it through the opposite side of the clay. Trying to make that as center as possible. And now that I have baked my pieces, I can go ahead and remove all of those stick pins. If you want it to resin, I would leave them on the stick pins while resining, and then you can remove. But I did not put any resin on my necklace. And then you can glue in your eye hooks if you made some earrings. And I would recommend doing that before you resin also, if you're going to resin. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the back of that little whoop-de-whoop -whoop thing I made. So that I can place on my earring finding. And you can put a little bit on the back of it too. And then press that onto the back of the earring. And then you can wait for it to dry and set it aside and it'll be good to go. Once it's all dry, this is what it looks like. And I've also laid out my necklace into the pattern that I want it to be. And I have my toggle in my class also. This is the wire I normally use, but it is black, so I didn't want it to show through the little blue beads. So I'm going to use this metal colored one. It's much lighter, so you shouldn't be able to see it through the center of the beads. I'll just go ahead and cut off a good sized piece. And I will put my bead cap cover on and then place on my crimp bead and crimp that as close to the edge as I can. 
If not, you can just cut off any excess wire that might be poking through at the top. And then start stringing your beads. And then once you get to your clay, just go through one end and then you can place on your bead and then add on your centerpiece. And then the tricky part, getting it to go through the other side. Once you get that done, just pull it all the way down and then continue on stringing your beads. And then just close it off by putting on your bead cap and your bead cap cover. And then of course, make sure you add on your toggle and your clasp with a jump ring on both sides. And I am done. So sparkly and pretty. I really like the way this turned out and I hope you enjoyed it too. And these are the earrings that I made. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.